Yo, geek protagonist. I gotta project my voice because I don't have my what's name, but I I need to go over these actors. They all need the credits before I go into this movie. So Zolo uh, Meruana played Jaime Reyes, killed it. Uh, Bruna Marquezine playing Jenny Court, amazing. Becky G being uh, Kajida or the Scarab, actually her voice fit really well. And especially when you can hear her like later, you'll see there's a re like references that was great. Um, Damon Alcazar, Alberto Reyes, the dad, he was amazing. He was heartfelt. He was uh, there like... He was definitely the glue in that family, and they gave him a lot of love. Uh, Br Bruna being that uh, she used, like, Ted Kord's kid, like, how they play that up, even though that's a kind of a made-up character, it really worked for the movie really well, and the ideals and the person of who he is. Uh, George Lopez, his comedic timing couldn't have been any better. It was just on point, um, especially playing the crazy uncle. And by the way... Just as I said, let's wait for the Batman to pass. Blah, blah, blah. There's actually context to that. There's a comparison. So it's not actually a woke line. There's actually a comparison. Uh, there's more context to it, basically. But, you know, people like to just jump off. I'm like, you got to sometimes give it that, like, okay, maybe. Hopefully you'll do this. Uh, Adriana Barraza, who I've, I remember her from Rambo Last Blood. I've seen her in Thor. Uh, she was in... Um, well, this, Blue Beetle, I think Babel. I've seen her in a few things over the years, and she's always awesome. Uh, Belisa Escobedo, I don't know a lot of her work, but I fell in love with her. She was, like, literally a standout character for me in this movie. She had the, 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 the sense of beauty, like, being a person, the type of drabness, but she was there, and she was her own, like, her had a personality, and I really enjoyed her and her brother's uh, interactions and her interaction with the family. She's kind of the drab one. But it worked. And I just, I fell in love with her. I was like, she's amazing. I would love to see her and more stuff. I'm going to definitely check her out. Uh, El Padita Correa, uh, Rocia Reyes, the, the mom, was amazing. There was a strength there that was about her with the connection. Uh, Susan Sarandon, loved her villain thing. Harvey Gillian. I've seen him in a few things. He's in uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Played an incredible part. And funny, it's, every part he was in, his face told you the story. So it was like he had his moments, he had his things, but it was him. And it was his acting capability that drew you in, yet he was over here. And it was great. And Raul Max Trio, uh, playing Carapax, great villain. Uh, great thing, story. I was intrigued, interested. You could tell he was someone in... As they progress, it goes over there. So all the actors, I just needed to give each one of them props. I think each and every one of them added to the story. So now, uh, talking about the movie itself, and don't worry, I'm not going to go into really spoilers. Uh, there was some changes that I thought was great. I got an argument with this guy online, uh, I guess it's an argument, maybe a conversation, because he was upset that they were doing a Blue Beetle movie, and that whenever we see Blue Beetle, it's always Jaime. Um, so he was like, oh, Smallville, Jaime, Brave and the Bull, Jaime, and did it, and Young Justice, the DC movies, and I'm like, well, Jaime is the current Blue Beetle. However, you don't know, they might reference Dan Garrett. Uh, now, with Dan, uh, what a lot of people don't know is, is that he's the original Blue Beetle from the Charleston comics, and, uh, he used to take this vitamin, it was like vitamin X in or something, where we give him some superpowers. Like, he could fly, his suit was bulletproof, and he could shoot, like, lasers out of his hands. And I think he had another power, but those are the main ones I remember. Um, so correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. We're, we're taking it all the way back to 1939, um, character. Yeah, like I said, geek protagonist. I know my comics. I'm a comic guy. So then it goes into Ted Court through the Silver Age. That's at the time when they were introducing new characters. Like they had the Green Lantern, the original. Uh, Alan Scott, that had the magic thing. He built it, the ring. And then they went to the Green Lantern Corps. That, that age of science and stuff like that. So they changed Blue Beetle to a major scientist kind of character. Um, you know, like him, Flash being Barry versus before it was Jay Garrick. So they like uh, kind of updated with a little bit more science fiction fantasy stuff, which worked great. Um... There's a lot of references to Ted Core. They do mention and you do get to see 
uh, things happening, and they actually talk about the legacy of Blue Beetle. You're just happening to go into this part, which was fantastic. You get to see a lot of things that is comic book references. Uh, Big Belly Burger, for example, is a big one in a lot of DC products, uh, but it was really well put together in the sense that I felt the previous Blue Beetles not having to go deep into them all got love, got a lot of good in it, and it really actually added to the story. Um, you'll see it when you see it, what they kind of go into it about it. And there is stuff that references it, as it should, because Blue Beetle, even in the comics, is a legacy. Um, they did change some things. Like his sister in the comics, I don't think is evil Victoria. I don't think she's actually evil in the comics, but in this she is, which was fine. It actually worked for the story. Uh, I like that the, the Scarab in him, there was a couple little changes of how the Scarab sees things, how he sees things, and where they're at. And I think it was a good change for the movie. Uh, the family dynamic was incredible i didn't know i was gonna really like the dynamic because i know uh like in young justice for example his dad and his mom are trying to appreciate it but they had an issue or like the um cartoon movie the teen titans i think it was the judas contract i think it was the judas contract it was either judas contract or of course it was teen titans versus justice League, but i think it was the judas contract where you get to see him talk to his family but they're still like his dad still has an issue with him being a superhero and stuff and the comics i think later is like a miles thing eventually they accept it um, I think with the crazy uncle and the family dynamic, the nana, -na, the whole thing, I actually think it was really good and it really helped the story and it made it stand far enough away from the comic to be its own, but close enough to the comic to still go, oh, that's like the comic. Uh, like I said, I fell in love with his sister. I, I love her. Um, uh, the gran granny had a great, uh, you know, moments and stuff like this and, Here's one of the things that some people may talk about. They actually talked about diversity situations, uh, them being a Mexican family, them dealing with the border, uh, you know, the aliens, things like that, like them being and what they have to deal with. However, it's a part of the story. It's not the story. And even when it's a part of the story, it talks about the strength of what they had to endure from their past to where they're at to now. Big thing about Jaime, you know, he, you know, he's a college graduate. He's like, and there's like a thing of the family strength and who they are and through all the pain and suffering, even when he comes back, it's like, wow, dang, dang, dang. And like, there's messages like where he talks about, hey, you know, we get hit, but unlike a lot of people, we get stronger from this. And it's a lot about family, you know, like the Diesel, but it's about the strength of their culture, the strength of who they are, but they didn't beat you over the head with it. They didn't go crazy on the nose with it. They didn't just sit there and go, yeah, Mexicans are doing this. Did they have a reference? There was even a reference um, about uh, ice thing in there, if you kind of catch it. But the way they did it, it was the story was something else. But it was like, we did this, but you could tell where the inspiration came from. But it worked because of that. And that's how it should be, Marvel. When you're doing these kind of things, Marvel, you don't just sit there and just go, see, woman strong, woman strong, or this, 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 Marvel. Da, 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 da. You got to do it like how you did with Black Panther. It's about the culture, but it's not the main, it's not the thing. It's just a part of it. Because a person's culture, their skin color, their everything is only one aspect, two aspects to who they are. It's a part of ingrained in them, but there's also other things. And I felt like these characters were full fleshed out people. I see one reviewer where he was like, oh, the music was off. I think the movie music was perfect. My friend said the same thing. It has like a old school 80s kind of vibe and a 90s kind of vibe. And it also has a little bit of like the 2000s kind of vibe, but in a good way. Kind of similar to Venom in that aspect. Um, Try to think uh, what else. CG, perfection, Marvel, take notes. Don't ever come out with another bad CG thing like that. What is? And I know some people like The Flash. There was intention there, at least with some. I'm not saying their CG was perfect, but anything in the Speed Force, your complaint is wrong. It's a light thing. Go read a science book. I actually understood what they were doing. Now, could that part, now, was there some bad CG in there, like with the babies and Flash? Yes. But it wasn't as bad as people try to make it out to be. Marvel's is worse, and I don't care what you say. You're wrong. I'm right. That's how that goes. So, deal with it. Now, beyond that, this, however was on point perfection. I think there was a mix of CG and practical, and I think it was great. Uh, how he fought was different than, you know, what you would see. It's not like Iron Man thing. It kind of reminds you of Guyver a bit, um, which I love Guyver. And uh, just the character Jaime, he was just a likable, good dude. And it, it just, this thing just happened to be upon him, and it was fantastic. Uh, there's two post-credit scenes, just in case you didn't know. Um, 
uh, this movie, the the family, they felt actually important. They didn't feel like they were just there. They actually were talking, dealing, doing, mixing, everything. Kind of like Spider-Verse to that degree, which that's a good thing. I got that Spider-Verse feel of how his family, his mom and his dad and his uncle are very important to him. And the family dynamic in this, especially because there is a lot of cultural things. I, I know people, you know, are Mexican. I know people are Puerto Rican and everything. And they have these different things. And they're very tight-knit. I know Dominicans as well. And there's a lot of things in their culture that they just have. And this one, I did feel they really represented very, very well a lot of the Mexican culture and some of the Mexican history and the generations of where they're going. And um, they talk about like a little bit of the struggle that they had, but it made sense for the story on, hey, this is where we're at and this is who we are. And I think that was just phenomenal. Um like I said, the action was good. The villains were great uh, through and through. I think the story progressed really well. Some people said I could have shaved off time. I think the time was perfect. Um, I didn't feel like I was sitting there going, oh my gosh, this, you know, it's starting to get a little long. Uh, I thought everything was very necessary. There are some very strong callbacks to things previous and comics and stuff like that that I was very appreciative of. And uh, also a lot of his powers that he was using straight out the comic book it looked like the comic book came to life and also too for a bunch of people i'm starting to see do this thing is it's good but it's no iron man most films aren't iron man that's why iron man's so good so stop doing that comparison i'm sick of people doing well it's this but it's not that it wasn't supposed to be that it's supposed to be its own thing now what sucks is i don't know how well this movie is going to do financially but it should and i'm kind of getting tired of the dc movies which are right now better than the marvel products not an opinion, it's a fact. I don't I don't care. You can sit there and say what you want. It's a fact. The, the DC stuff is better. I'm not even saying it's perfect, but it's better than the crap. You can compare anything to Secret Invasion. You can compare it to Flash. And before you sit there and go, you can't compare a TV show. They $250 million. Can you believe that for what we got with Secret Invasion? $50 on it, okay? That's number one. That's a movie budget. Number two, if you watch Secret Invasion... It's about the length of a little lengthy movie. So, as most of their shows. So, no. When they do these Disney Plus shows, they're movies. They're just chopped up movies. So, no. They are fair comparisons. And I'm sick of people trying to find ways to protect Marvel. Your Marvel product is not good right now. You just need to accept it. They're doing garbage. And they need to do better. DC needs to just make sure that they're keeping a quality product and they got to make sure everything is quality, but also too, they got to make sure they don't say stuff like this doesn't matter or anything. I feel like this movie does take place in the new DCU, as James Gunn said, uh, going forward. And um, like I said, the family dynamic was great. They were able to keep the cast big but small at the same time. There's a lot of story and how the family had his back and it's a like, they're like, no, family this is what we do and i loved that and his family actually wasn't just people that were around that were doing stuff no they were important because they they were involved and they needed to have help and i really appreciated that so um like i said the acting was great i fell with characters i laughed i you know i cried I teared up there were some really heartfelt moments and people who are going it's cheesy and then marvel's cheesy and I know you're like, why do you keep bringing up Marvel? Because I'm tired of people letting Marvel slide with every bad thing. But as soon as DC does one little thing off, it's, oh my God, DC. But Marvel gets away with everything. No, no. We don't accept that over here anymore. I put them under a microscope just like people do with DC. And I'm telling you right now, this was better. And it wasn't cheesy. It was funny. It was entertaining. It was enjoyable. And as a matter of fact, I'm waiting to see because this I'm still absorbing it. But it might be my favorite DC movie to date. And that is including over Aquaman, which Aquaman has been my favorite. So as I say, the message goes, this is a blow my mind. You need to go see this movie just for the sheer fact that it is a good, enjoyable movie. The, the 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 stuff was perfect. You could tell love was put into it, the CG. I'm not even saying you have to love it the way I loved it. But this is one of the better films that just came out, period. And one of the better superhero films that has just come out. So, that's why I say, blew my mind, deal with it. And like I said, yes, I will keep coming at Marvel and Disney's neck until they learn their lessons to write a story that has the message, that has the diversity, that has the stuff. Especially because it's like, hey, we, it's time we get a superhero. 
without beating you over the head with it or losing the story because you think the message is more important than the story. The story always comes first. The story, the entertainment, and then if you have messages or you want to do, tell cultural things, that's when you do it. So, Geek Protagonist, tell me if you've seen this movie. I don't care. I loved it. I'm, like I said, contemplating it might be my number one. I got some more stuff to show you later. And you need to just see it. Support this movie. This is DC going forward. If you love your old Marvel movies, or you like Marvel. It's bright. It's not dark and broody. It has funny moments. It has these things. And it works its way through. And it feels like its own self. So I will see you. Yes.